Hi, I'm Dr. Kirsten Swanson here at University of North Carolina at Charlotte, and I'm going to talk to you about some tricky points to practice in the third movement of the Stamitz Viola Concerto, marked Rondo. First of all, let me talk a little bit about the piece. Here, as you can see in the music, we don't want to follow the ink. If you heard my recording, you noticed that I went back and played the beginning after every section. As you can see in the music, I've marked these sections. A, B, C, and D. So from A, you will play all the way through B until you see this sign and you see a da capo. That means return to the beginning at A, play to the fine, and skip to C. You'll do that at the end of C and you'll do that at the end of section D. So you'll always end with the rondo theme. This piece has a lot of challenging parts which we'll break down together. First, let's look at this note here. This is a fifth. Fifths are the hardest double stop for st upper string players to play. Playing a fifth sometimes means that you're going to have to put your fingers down in a way that doesn't feel quite normal to you. The way I suggest is experimenting. So this is how I found my own fifth. It'll be different for each of you. I encourage you to keep finding it and keep practicing it in context. Next, you see we have sections with a lot of double stops here and here. The way that I practice double stops is to make sure that I know each line individually first. Then I play the bottom line. And then I try to combine them. Always work slowly through double stops and be careful that your left hand feels really comfortable. The section at D is especially challenging for us. My suggestion when you start to learn this piece is to not take A too quickly, because if we do, then D is going to take off. The way that I practice D, or any sections that have tricky left-hand passage work, is I start with rhythms. I'll do an example for you. do the opposite of that rhythm.
sometimes I slur it. When you practice a left-hand passage all these different ways, it tricks the brain into thinking that the passage isn't so hard. I recommend doing that throughout any part of this last page that feels hard to you. Now, if you've been watching your music, you can see that we have alto clef and treble clef throughout the part. My recommendation for playing in treble clef if you're not comfortable is to mark all your notes in. Some people like to write the notes in, some people like to write the fingerings. I recommend you doing whatever makes you more comfortable. I also want to talk about how to play really high on the A string. If we look at this last line, all of our notes are very high up. First of all, we want to make sure that our thumb is around the instrument like this. And then our hand is on top of the strings. Sometimes when we play high up, we reach for it and then our hand feels really tense. The key to playing successfully high on the A string is to feel loose and to keep a comfortable hand position. So let's find that top D. Notice my hand is really high up and I feel pretty comfortable. Practice this line slowly and with separate bows and have a beautiful tone. I demonstrated this piece at an intermediate tempo, but I suggest finding a consistent tempo for you that you're comfortable with. I'm Dr. Kirsten Swanson here at University of North Carolina at Charlotte. This is a very challenging piece for the viola. Make sure to work slowly, consistently, and you'll get there.